Hi, I'm Bree from mummyof4.com. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am sharing my top tips and tricks for organizing your home the easy way so you can keep it neat, tidy, and organized without the stress. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at 7 p.m. I share loads of organization and life hacks, hauls, speed cleans, and vlogs. I hope you will love it all. Now let's get on to the organizing. My first tip is to declutter your home before you organize it. With clutter everywhere, you will not be able to see the wood for the trees and you will just spend your life moving things from one pile of junk into a slightly more organized pile of junk. So you know you need to declutter, where on earth do you start? Now I could talk all day about decluttering, but for the purpose of this video, let's try and keep it brief. Every time you hold an item in your hands and you decide whether you want to declutter it, ask yourself, do I need it or do I love it? If the answer to at least one of those questions is absolutely yes, I love it or I need it or even both, then it stays. If not, it's gotta go for a full, detailed description of exactly how to declutter step-by-step -step process. I have got a blog post to guide you through all that. I will link that below so you can take a read of that later on after you've watched this video. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Ren Kitchens for working with me to bring you this video today. If you have been following along our journey, you'll know this is the very first time I've actually worked with Ren, but I have talked about them quite a lot because we actually bought our own Ren kitchen before I was working with them at all, just before Christmas last year. This house has been a total start to finish makeover project. And I must say that the kitchen is my absolute favorite room in the house. I could not be more thrilled with it. So thank you to Ren for approaching me, having seen my videos on my channel, which feature the kitchen, to work with me. And thank you so much to you guys for supporting my channel, because if you don't watch my videos, then they wouldn't want to work with me at all now, would they? So thank you so much to you guys for all your support too. Now back to the tips. Implement a clear surfaces rule wherever you can in your home. What you'll find is that stuff attracts more stuff. And as soon as you've got one item placed on a countertop, your family will think eh, it's okay to just add another thing and another thing until suddenly you have a whole pile of clutter. Something dumped on a clear surface is gonna stick out like a sore thumb and prompt either the person who's about to leave it there, perhaps not to do it, or someone else to actually clean it up a little bit quicker. Next, we need to identify the clutter danger zones in our homes. Now, these are the areas where things get dumped to organize later and later very rarely comes around. So often this might be an area by the front door where you're coming in for keys, school bags, things like that. It might be an area in your kitchen where things get dumped. Walk around your home and try and look at it as if you are someone that does not live there and see it through their eyes. Another good tip is to actually take a video around your home. I know this sounds a bit mad, but you're far more likely to notice things when you watch it back on a video than if you're just walking around your house because you're just so used to it. Look for these clutter danger zones and then you can look for storage solutions to deal with them. So for example, if one of your clutter danger zones is by your front door and you've got loads of school bags and things, you can organize a school bag station so that the children have got somewhere to put their bags somewhere for you to put your keys, your handbag, things like that when you walk through the door. Maybe it's coats, maybe you need coat storage. Whatever it may be, identify it and come up with a solution for that danger zone. My next tip is to use baskets to organize the insides of your cupboards. This is a great way to subdivide and organize your cupboards, both in your kitchen and other areas of your home. But it will also make your life easier when it comes to cleaning because it's so much easier to pull everything out and give it a good clean. It's easier for seeing what you've got and stock control because again, you can pull things out, see exactly what you've got and put it back. Don't forget, you can also use baskets inside your fridge and freezer to subdivide what you have, which makes it far easier for stock control and cleaning. Organize your drawers with subdividers. Now the most obvious example of this in the kitchen would be your cutlery drawer, which is essential to have a subdivider in it if you want to keep all your bits and pieces neat and tidy. But other drawers can be subdivided too, including other kitchen drawers and drawers around the home. 
A top tip is to repurpose other boxes as subdividers for your drawers. Good examples of ones to look out for are the perfume boxes that you get at Christmas time as like a gift set, and also boxes that phones and tablets come in normally make really good subdividers for drawers, especially in dressing tables and things like that. Think about vertical storage solutions wherever possible. So rather than storing things horizontally, often things will fit a lot better if you just turn them the other direction. This works especially well for things like pan lids. I used to have a pan lid nightmare where they were falling out all over me every time I opened a cupboard or a drawer. I now have a pan lid sorter, so they are stored vertically, they're kept securely, so they don't rattle around when I open the drawer, and it's just a better use of space. Go paperless wherever you can, because the less paper coming into your house, the less there will be to organize. So contact your bank, your children's school, anywhere that sends you a lot of mail and a lot of paper, see if you can switch to getting it via email. For things that you have to have by paper method only, then you can use an app in your phone. I use Evernote where you can photograph things like letters from the school, and then you can shred and destroy the original and recycle that paper, and you still have a copy of it backed up on the cloud and in your phone whenever you need to access it. Have one designated place in your home for receipts, warranties, instruction manuals, and other documentation that you cannot get digitally and you really need to keep your hands on. Allocating a special place for it means that you will never be left hunting around for it again, and also you won't be left with piles of cluttered bits of instruction manual that you just don't know what to do with. I like to use an accordion folder and we keep it in our kitchen because a lot of the instruction manuals actually offer things like the cookers, dishwashers, things like that. Think about where you store things in your home compared to where you actually use them. So for example, in our last house, our last kitchen, we have the dishwasher down one end and in spite of the fact we actually had a cupboard next to the dishwasher, that had food in it and the plates and glasses were down the other end of the kitchen, which meant lots of traipsing up and down the kitchen. Now, with hindsight, this made no sense at all and it did not really take us moving and having a new kitchen to reorganize that. Still, in this kitchen, we have thought out where we put things a lot better. So our dishwasher is just here and then we've got glasses up here, easy to put away, and then we've got children's plates here, and the cupboard just behind my camera there has got the other plates. So without having to move far at all, it's really easy to unload the dishwasher, and then further away is the food, which isn't accessed quite as frequently as when you're unloading the dishwasher, that kind of thing. So just really think, are you making your life easier? And if not, just swap the contents of your cupboards around. Think about storage solutions that stack. So for example, I have bought a set of these canisters. I've actually bought more than one set because by sticking to the same item, you know they're all going to fit together. So these are designed to stack anyway, but then if I was to switch to a different type of canister, then they wouldn't all fit together. The same goes for things like baskets, especially the kind of baskets you move things around your home in a lot. So things like laundry baskets, if you buy multiple versions of identical laundry baskets, they will all stack neatly when they need to go away, as opposed to if you have all different shapes and sizes of laundry baskets, then when you need to put them away because they're empty, if that ever happens in your house, then they won't go away as neatly. Make the most of all of the height available in your cupboard space. I have several different shelf inserts to maximize the height inside the cupboards. So we've got one to make an extra level of shelving above our plates. And I've got another one to store things like casserole dishes, which means that multiple casserole dishes can be stored and easily accessed without any hassle at all. Make stock taking part of your weekly routine in order to keep organized. This is especially important before you go grocery shopping to see what you already have in your cupboards to avoid buying too much and ending up with overflowing cupboards and turning into a bit of a disorganized chaos. I have got a whole video on meal planning and stock rotation and things. It's all discussed in that, so make sure you check that out next. Keep an empty drawer in your bedroom as a chair. Now we all know what the chair is in the bedroom. The chair is where the clothes live, 
when they are not dirty enough to be washed, yet they are not clean enough to be returned to the cupboard. And hence, they are relegated to the chair. Now, for years and years, my husband has dumped things on the chair. And when I got rid of the chair, he found a worktop to put them on. So since we've moved to this house, we have got a drawer in our bedroom that is the chair. And when he takes off his clothes, they're not dirty enough to be washed yet, that's where they go. And I don't have to look at a big pile of not quite very dirty clothes. When you think about storage, you need to make sure that the things that you use most are easily accessible. So do not have things that you only use very occasionally in the way of your everyday items. So when this comes to things like kitchen cupboards, take out things that are very seasonal perhaps, something you might only use at Christmas time or at parties and put those things out of the way in higher shelves and leave your accessible space for your day-to-day -day stuff to make your lives easier. Think about creating yourself an organization station. Now we have ours in our kitchen, but you could put it in any communal space where everyone in your family can see it. Ours include things like what's coming up this week and next week, monthly planning, as well as meal planning. Perhaps most importantly is the communal shopping list because that way if any family member realizes that we are running low or out of something, then they can add it to that one central shopping list and I know exactly what I need to buy when it comes to grocery shopping. Let your space define what you allow yourself to buy and bring into your home. So rather than thinking, okay, we're going to have all the things, think, right, this is the space we have got. So if I want to buy another one of a kitchen appliance or top or whatever it might be, then you're going to have to declutter out one item from that category in order to make space for what you want next. Doing things this way means you're never going to end up in a massive, difficult, oh gosh, I can't see the wood for the trees and the clutter situation like you would have been before you did your first big declutter. Use your microwave minutes to stay on top of being organized. What are microwave minutes, I hear you ask? Well, microwave minutes are those times where you've got a few minutes to spare before you have to do something else. So maybe it's while you're waiting for the kettle to boil, while you're waiting for the microwave to finish, where you can just do a little job. So maybe you could tidy up a drawer, you can clear a surface, whatever it is, just to make sure that you're using those minutes will help you stay on top of your home and avoid the overwhelm of too much mess. Thank you so much for watching and thank you again to Ren Kitchens for working with me on this video. I do adore our kitchen and like I said at the beginning, we did actually go through the whole process. Before working with them, we bought it all ourselves and we couldn't have been more delighted. So when they got in touch to work with me on this video, I was thrilled. So if you've liked this video, please give it a huge thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe. Hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday at 7 p.m. My latest video is just across here and another video I think you may enjoy from my channel is just down here. See you guys soon. Bye.